Hey guys, I'm Paco. I'm going to be showing you how to set up your map with my Survival Genesis script. Um, so we can pick up the script simply by just going to the, either the thread or my GitHub. Uh, inside the GitHub we can just fly over here uh, and there should be just a simple releases uh, thing here to pick up the package. We just want to pick this one. Uh, you want to download this and we're going to extract that into our maps folder which should uh, look like this. So this is my maps folder, we just pop it in and we can open it up and look at all the scripting stuff. Um, so just very quickly, I will be using Visual Studio for editing my scripts, so I can actually just drag these in here. Uh, you can also use something like Notepad, so I can also load up some of these scripts with Notepad. Uh, whatever flavor of script editing you want to do, that's uh, up to you. Uh, but I will be using Visual Studio because it is just easier to visually show you guys everything. Um, but first things first, we're going to pop into the map editor itself. Uh, so Fa Forever map editor, or Forge the Lands Forever for those of you who are playing at home. Um, we're going to just start by just creating a new map. Uh, so one of the first things I recommend you doing uh, recommend doing is just um, making your map as uh, title start with survival. Uh, this is just helps organizing maps a little bit easier. Uh, survival maps are all clumped together if they all start with the word survival at the front. Uh, so I recommend doing that. And in this case, I'm just going to call mine uh, survival tutorial. Uh, and you can add a description of whatever you want. Uh, in terms of like sizing. Uh, I recommend 10 kilometers squared, so 512 pixels. Uh, it's a good ratio of not too big, so it doesn't like lag out the game, but it's also not claustrophobic, so you're not you know you, you, you're stepping on each other's toes or something like that. Um, I'm just going to leave it at 10 kilometers. Uh, you can do whatever you like. Uh, in terms of players, you can have it literally set to one if you want to. I, I don't recommend that. The whole point of this was to make it multiplayer or flexible with multiple players. But uh, I would try to steer away from anything above eight players. Uh, as soon as you go above that, you start hitting territory where it's like really a specific type of gameplay. It's not a whole lot of fun. Um, like it, it, to get get sixteen players together to play it is really difficult. Uh, I just don't recommend doing it. Um, I, I feel like six players is that kind of sweet spot. Uh, you're not, you know, if anyone plays your map, you're not having to wait for a lot of people, and uh, it's very, it's a lot more flexible. Uh, but the script, however, does uh, balance depending on how many players are actually playing. I just feel like people do get a little bit off put knowing that the map says you require 18 or it was 18, or 16 or eight players. Um, you know, it, it's just a, it's a psychological thing more than anything. So, but regardless, um, pick however many players you want. For me, I'm going to be doing four. Uh, water is not required, uh, but I will be getting into that when we get to the markers. Uh, so if in this case, I am going to do water. Um, and yeah, we're just going to jump right in and I'm going to probably fast forward through some of this stuff now, uh, creating the map. Uh, and I will explain each of the markers as I go, uh, once I get to that stage. And yeah, I think they're just going to jump right into it. All right. So, uh, just while we're fast forwarding through this time lapse, I'm just going to sort of talk about very quickly, uh, sort of design philosophy for your survival map. Uh, it's important to try to have your defensive position behind the players, uh, so the enemies will have to go through the players, uh, generally their bases, uh, to get to the uh, defense position. Another thing to take into consideration is navigation uh, for the AI. Um, less complicated navigation, the better. Uh, the more navigation, the more uh, processing, the slower the map will run. Uh, it's best to have very kind of I don't want to say hard edges, but very open areas. Uh, a rule of thumb is you want at least two and a half fat boys worth of width for your uh, sort of a lane per, per uh, enemy lane. This is to make sure that experimental units will uh, be able to sort of stand side by side and get through uh, a bit more narrow areas without just bumping into each other over and over again. Uh, Captain Klotz used my script. One of the things we found very early on was the uh, 
pathing if we didn't know where the enemies were pathing it was very confusing so you need to throw in even if it's just a simple example of uh just a you know a, a few little paths here and there to identify where the ai is going um that it, it makes a huge difference all right now that i've uh, finished making the map I, I know this is a beautiful map and it took me hours lots of work oh we're going to go into the markers so one of the things with this is we have obviously four players here uh, armies one two and three and four uh we you know in this case it's probably best to work with symmetry uh, i'm just not going to because i just want to smash through this and uh you know get it done so first things first is i'm going to put a, a player in each direction um roughly where I want them uh you know again symmetry is usually a good thing uh and I you know it's clearly identifiable of where I want each thing to be coming from so like for each land I want to come from each end and then I've got the sea for where I want the navy to come and then our air units might just come over the top of over the land as well um so what I'm going to do here is start spawning in the markers and then I will explain each one. So first marker we need is obviously our player marker. That makes sense. Uh, um, but now we're going to work with the uh, land marker. So the first thing we need to create is the land spawn. Uh, so I've got, I'm just doing a, a symmetry thing here, but I will have to name these markers individually. Uh, so the first thing here is land under slash spawn under slash one uh and i'm making sure that this is in player one's lane so in this case it's not i need to fix that uh so i will put player one in the same lane as spawn one uh the way that this works is that i'm designating that land units can spawn here which will be uh relevant to the wavetable uh obviously i'm setting the spawn um i want the spawn to be in the most open area away from the player uh so in this case like in the dead center of this circle is perfect uh because the spawn is radius based uh we can actually define how big that radius is but right now i just want to put that in the middle and then i define one so one actually uh reflects player one so if for example um we were playing this map and nobody we could only fill in three of the four slots uh whatever slot wasn't filled in for example player slot or army slot one uh and i have land spawn one uh no enemies will spawn here so that's that's really important that these align with the player's number all right so the second thing we need here is the uh pathing uh node so I'm going to put this probably just behind or just in front of the player uh, spawn. Uh, it's pretty much guaranteed that the player will uh, build just around where they spawn. You know, it, again, ideally you want to put the pathing and the player sort of in line with each other. So we're going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to grab this marker. I'm going to name it land path one one. Um, so I'm actually going to pull this one back just just for this example. Uh, so what this is, is again, it's following from this uh, naming convention, sp land spawn one, this one's land path, so the first path, uh, so land path one, one, so that represents, the first number represents what lane we're in, so in this case one, and then what position of the path this is, so this is one, so if I create a second one, again, this is just purely for example, whoops, so I've created too many. Uh, this one, this one would be called land path one, two. Um, and that would then follow from this point to this point to this point. So the first thought you might be thinking like, well, should I put this second path towards the middle? Like, should I have all these nodes down the middle? And the answer is no. Uh, the way I have set it up is that we actually, uh, the AI will then path through whatever designated waypoints have been set up and then it will path to the defense position so we're going to add that marker now i'm just going to turn off symmetry pop it right in the middle and we're going to call this one uh, defense spawn and this is where our objective that we need to defend as players will spawn um, 
there's plenty of different things that can be spawned around this. Uh, well, sorry, spawned as the defense objective, but at the moment it's just like a cyber and, uh, civilian facility structure thing. Uh, it's ideally one of the best uh, buildings to use uh, because it, it's easy to repair, but it can also be set up to take an absolute beating if need be. Um, all right, so we've got that. And that is essentially all we have to do for the land spawn. So that would be one lane. So for example, for me to do the second lane, this one would be land spawn under slash two. And then this one would be land path two one so again land path under slash two under slash one so it's the first position for the second army and i should probably double check that this is army two it is not i don't think i put any of the markers in the right order but that's okay uh when i spawn them so that's that uh so we got land path one or sorry land path two one and then this would be land path two two so uh, so that will path like that so the way again the way it works it will path from the top to the middle to this one you can use this for directional stuff so for example if i grab this uh first position put it in the middle and put my second position down this lane uh that's kind of how you would do uh pathing and you can create as many or as little of these paths that you need uh, making sure that you have at least one. Uh, so like land path one, one or land path two, two. Uh, it is important that you have one of each player that is spawned in. And then this would, uh, work in succession with like, say if I had 16 players, I would, uh, create this land path for the 16th player would be land path 16, one, <laughs> and then land path 16, two. Um, and again, you can have as many as these you want. So you can go like path two, three, path two, four, path two, five. Uh, and it doesn't matter if uh, each lane has a different number of waypoints or markers in this case. Um, you can do as many as little as you need. It's procedurally works at, it like works out what all markers are for the uh, each lane, um, as long as the naming convention is set up correctly. Uh, so. Again, the pathing top, middle, middle, and then once it runs out of waypoints, it didn't just paths to this middle defense spawn position. Um, and yeah, again, that's that's all you need for, for land units. Uh, so for naval units, it's the same difference. And I will again, once again, just spawn these. Uh, can we do diagonal for this one? I think that's what I want. Uh, sorry, this one and this one. Yeah, perfect. So again, land, I'm going to spawn like that. I'm going to grab this one and this one's going to be Navy spawn one. And then we're going to create a second one for where we want the Navy to path to. So probably just the edge here because we want them to be able to attack the players here. Uh, you know what? I might even make that a bit closer. Um, the AI will just path as close as they can, like regular... Uh, you know, uh, move commandments will work. Uh, so this one would be Navy path one, one. Uh, so for player one here, the Navy units will come from here. So obviously this is de totally dependent on each of your maps, but in my case, I want the player to take care of this side and this side. Uh, that means that player two could be affected by player one's uh, units. And I mean, that's kind of just the nature of survival. You're trying to work together. So one player might be able to hold the Navy quite well, uh, you know, take on more than, you know, maybe one player can. So it's, it's about creating that dynamic of uh, cooperation. All right, so again, Navy, that's as simple as it is. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. Uh, and then air units, again, same kind of difference. So in this case, I'm gonna have the air units spawn in from, uh, sorry, once again, just double check that I'm spawning the right markers. I'm gonna actually have the air units spawn in the top corners uh, because I want the air units to fly over the same path as the ground units. Uh, this might, again, this is a design philosophy thing of what you're trying to achieve. Uh, maybe you want air units to attack from a different angle, but uh, having the player focus just down this, uh, you know, this kind of area is a lot easier than trying to have them attack from, say, like, 
uh, the middle here where they're not necessarily got their focus of where they're putting their defenses and where all the engineers might be. So again, just food for thought. So this one will just be air spawn one. And again, we're just wanting to path just, just around about where the player is. So this would be then air path one, one. And that will spawn there, go here, and once they've done what they've, you know, once they've passed to here, they will then go for the objective. Uh, if it's like an interceptor, say like a, you know, a fighter, they might not have any targets because players don't generally build a lot of air, so they will land near the objective, but it is a distraction for like turrets and things, so then they're, they're not necessarily a bad thing having them land. Um, it, it's it's part of the dynamic. You, you we could set up something potentially more complicated, but we're trying to keep it simple and tr try to keep the performance in. All right, so that's the air spawn done. Again, very straightforward and easy. Uh, now I will show you how to do the boss spawning. So again, it's it's the same kind of difference. It's very straightforward, but the difference here is. Uh, there is only one position uh, boss units can spawn in. Uh, we define boss units as a specific part of the wave table. Uh, so in this case, uh, I might want the land units to spawn. You know what, I'm just very, very quickly, I'm just gonna smash in a, uh, oops, let's do this one. So I might actually have like a specific spot for where my, um, land bosses and things will come from so this will be my land boss spawn and we're going to label that uh land boss one word spawn one uh so this again is our boss spawn position it works similar pretty much the same difference as the land spawn i've tried to keep things consistent uh and we can set the radius for this uh generally bosses will be you can define units, but they are generally like experimental units with like scaled health or scale speed or whatever, whatever you feel like you need to make the map more interesting. And once again, I'm just going to add a move to position. Uh, I'm going to put it behind the objective in this case. So I'm going to call this one land boss spawn, oh not spawn, sorry, a path one one so this is probably going to be a little confusing uh we only have the land spawn sorry land boss spawn one is the only place the bosses are going to spawn but we said path one one so it's 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 there is a system that i haven't quite finished setting up in in, in terms of the release 1.1a uh i do plan to have uh, multiple boss spawning it, you know it could be the functionality could be there but i haven't thoroughly tested it uh but we just need to set it to uh land boss uh path one one um and the bosses will spawn there and then move down to this land spawn thing so <clears throat> excuse me uh for the naval bosses i'm going to do them from the south so maybe I want the South players to do uh, deal with that. So we'll go Navy boss spawn one. And, and then again, we're going to just put it right next to the shoreline here and just go uh, Navy boss path one, one. So that's the Navy boss done. Um, they, again, they, uh, the Navy units do uh, get waypoint uh, information to attack or move towards the defense position. Uh, civilian buildings are actually kind of low priority for enemies to attack. If there's not a lot around it, they will attack a civilian uh, structure, uh, which is again, a good thing. It kind of gives players that little bit of a buffer to go, oh crap, something's going wrong. And you know, the civilian building doesn't just immediately get hard targeted and you know, st strategic bombers and such. All right, so I've got the Navy there and then air units I want from uh, above. So in the center here, so this is air boss, uh, spawn one. I'm totally not using a cheat sheet, can you tell? Uh, and then again, the move position. So one of the things I've done on my other maps is I'll actually give uh, air bosses multiple waypoints. Uh, and the way that I do that is just go like to one group of players and then the next group of players. So this would be air boss path one, one. 
and then this other one would be air boss path one two um, <clears throat> so again this this just kind of makes it so the air boss comes from the top it goes to the left group of players and then immediately once it's hit that waypoint it goes to the right so if you're using something like a, a gunship or something like that for a boss it'll do some damage to these players do some damage to these players and then sort of idle in the middle of the uh defense area uh, again this is just sort of a way to make you know boss fights a little more interesting if you want to do something a little more advanced you'll have to like obviously code it uh, but that yeah so that that's generally how we get all the boss stuff set up um, and now uh, we're going to do the nuclear launcher stuff so this is pretty easy this is just nuke one uh, the numbers don't correlate to the player count. It's like one of the few things that don't that doesn't correlate to the player count. Um, this is where the nuke launches will be spawned. So nuke one, uh, this one on the top right here would be like nuke two. So nuke two, and then down here would be like nuke three, and then nuke four, etc. So that will spawn in where the, that's where the launchers will spawn in there and there um, and then they will fire on the objective that's just how they're programmed they will just go straight for the objective uh, and then we can define that in the wavetable okay so we've got the nukes in and the enemy bases so this is one of the <laughs> newer features is that enemies uh, again defined on the wave type table can spawn in a base uh, so again this is just base one uh, base one let me spell that correctly and then I can do another one uh, like over here uh, so we call that like base two. Oh god my brain does not want to spell that today and you know what I'm actually gonna put them up here where the bosses are I feel like that could make it a little bit more interesting so uh, by default these can uh, I think they're uh, quantum gates I've set them to default to quantum gates uh, you can define whatever you want these to be you can make them like artillery pieces you can make them whatever and we can also define whether or not those can be like a winnable objective so if you kill these uh, and it's enabled you can actually let the players who are surviving in the middle win uh, off of just killing those um, and other than that, uh, that's all the markers we need. Obviously, I haven't set up uh, for player three and player four, which I'll quickly do uh, on another time lapse, as you're probably seeing right now. Uh, but yeah, that that's that's it. That's that's kind of how the markers work. They're not super complicated. Um, you want to try to use them sparingly. Um, again, any sort of additional mark you, you add in terms of a path could be you know, 100 units have to then add that waypoint to their pathing. And, you know, it, it's just one of those complicated things where you're adding more processing. Uh, but for the most part, we just want to keep it s simple. So, um, yeah. All right, now that your uh, markers are now added in, and we've got everything for four players. Uh, obviously, this gets a lot more complicated once you have more markers for more players. Uh, I find six players, again, is just uh, teetering on that manageable. Uh, one thing you just want to quickly do is make sure the naming convention's all good. So, for example, here I've just written Air Boss. I haven't added the additional S. Uh, this can cause issues um, if... If, for example, uh, Air Boss Path 1 1 was spelt wrong, uh, the rest of the paths will not be detected. You have to make sure that they're all spelled correctly. Uh, if Air, so, for example, again, if Air Boss Path 1 2 was not working, uh, Air, Pass, Air Boss Path 1 would be working, 
uh, but the second one wouldn't uh, be detected, and any ones after that would not be detected. So air boss is fine, defense spawn, land path, base one and two, uh, navy path spawn, path one, nukes, sweet. So this is our map done. Awesome. Uh, one additional thing here I forgot to mention is that we actually need to add uh, two extra armies. Uh, you can do this through the scenario file, uh, but we can also do it inside this editor. So we just hit this plus. Uh, we need to add this extra army, and one of them is called Army Survival Ally, and the other one is called, and I will just bring it up, is Arm Army Survival Enemy. Uh, these are the two factions that the players will fight against and have as an ally for the defense objects. All right, now the map's done, we're just going to save it. And we can test this. Obviously, it won't have the script in it yet, uh, but, you know, th this is going to be a whole thing. Uh, so what we're going to do now is actually add the script to it. So if you've already got a pre-existing map, this is a good example of adding a, the script to it. Uh, obviously, you'll need to add these markers if your map has not got these markers already. Uh, but now we can just jump in and start getting some of that script in. So we're going to get the file that we extracted. Uh, I put it into my maps folder. It just makes it easier having an example in the folder right next to it. Um, so I'm going to pop this open and we're going to grab the relevant files that we need. So uh, we definitely need the script. Uh, we need the options, uh, we need the waves, units, library, and game modes folder, uh, but we do not want to override or replace the scenario save or the um, SC map file. Uh, so I'll just pop them over here, copy them straight over, uh, and then we just need to rename some of the stuff. So for example, the script, the basic script looks like this and the advanced script will look like this. So what I'm going to do is just delete the old one, but first I'm gonna copy its name and then just replace that name with this name. And with the options here, there is no options file to replace. So I'm just going to take the map's name and just paste it on top. Cool. Uh, so the next thing we need to do now is actually open up the scenario file. So. I am going to just close all these because these are no longer relevant. Uh, we are going to pop into the tutorial. I'm just going to open that up and I'm going to open up my uh, survival genesis blank map as well. So I'll just open that up. Um, so one thing you can immediately notice is an additional line. So this additional line is the directory line uh, this directory directory line can actually be erased quite quite easily when you uh, use something like the forged alliance forever map editor uh, saving in this will actually delete this line so this is one of those it's annoying to have to deal with but it's better than the alternative uh, so if we just pop over to my tutorial script here and then just underneath this script line we add this directory directory line, I'll just zoom in it in a little bit to make it a little bit more legible. And we just want to make sure that we're actually referring to the same folder. So it's easy enough, just copy the previous lines folder and paste it here. Uh, again, this is just the simplest way to have uh, file management set up properly. Um, without getting into too technical like technical stuff uh it just it, it makes it so i can have folder structures it means that uh you as a user only has to add this line and you don't have to edit any other scripts uh like like adding this directory information to other scripts so it, it's 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 annoying but it is the best uh solution to the problem for now all right so now we've got that uh technically the map should probably start working at this point. Um, so yeah, let's let's do a test. So I'm gonna open up the Supreme Commander Forged Alliance uh, dev version. I recommend setting that up uh, for this because we'll be testing a lot and we don't wanna like clog up the uh, Forged Alliance forever um, lobby stuff. So a few th settings I'm just gonna pop on. I'm just gonna pop on some uh, AI. Uh, it doesn't matter where I am. It doesn't matter where the AI is. This is just to make sure that everything's going to spawn in and work. 
Um, and a few settings I'm going to turn on is uh, Fog of War is set to none, game speed adjustable. Uh, this allows us just to see everything that's happening. Uh, adjustable means we can just fast forward through stuff and cheating is on in case we need to test something specific or if uh, enemies are going to, you know, ruin my quick, you know, quick test. Uh, another bunch of settings uh, towards the bottom under advance is uh, setting, all, set, setting the enemy types to all. Uh, so rather than just land or navy or whatever, we want to set it to all to make sure they're all spawning just fine. Uh, again, this is dependent on your map. If you don't have any uh, like sea units, we'll just test it with uh, just say like air and land. Uh, build time set to 30 seconds. This just means we get into it very quickly. Uh, defense structure is a civilian building. That sounds good to me. Uh, and we're just going to set the wave frequency down to 15 seconds. Uh, that means that enemies, like the whole wave will happen within 15 seconds. It's just a very quick way to like burn through a map. Um, the spawn ratio uh, should be uh, in conjunction with the wave frequency, so you'll still get the same amount of units. All right, so we're just going to jump in, and once it loads, we're just looking for errors. Uh, so errors are very uh, will pop up very easily. Um, so this is the uh, debug console. I've just got to set to warnings to see errors. There's no errors, so that's really good. Uh, the waves are going to start very soon, um, so I'm just going to build some like anti-air uh, in the meantime, and we're just going to spawn, uh, speed it up to see what spawns. So everything's spawning in nicely. I'm not seeing any errors. The only errors I'm seeing are just related to mod errors. Uh, so we've got nuclear launches have spawned in. We've got enemy bases has spawned in. So that's where I put them. Just double check everything. Uh, it's worth just doing a quick pause once all the units spawn in. Uh, but we've got land units here, here and here, air units in all corners, and then we've got naval units uh, on all sides. So we can hit continue. Just make sure everything's all right. Uh, we've got the tier three wave example, which is just more tier three units. Uh, and then we've got custom units. And then we've got the boss. So the boss is spawned in, fantastic, with a little custom uh, heavy point defenses, but everything seems to be working just fine. Uh, I, it's unlikely I'm going to survive this, yep. Uh, but yeah, everything's working, and there it is. Uh, the nukes just fired, and of course I've got it in fast forward, so the nukes are moving very quickly. Um, so yeah, all the wave stuff is working. I've been defeated. This is a good sign. This means that the script is working just fine. All right, now that we know that the scripting is the script is working just fine, we're going to uh, jump back into the actual script folder. So uh, back into our maps folder and into tutorial, and this is where we we'll get into the meat of making this our own, uh, you know, our own survival and how we want to set all that up. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go through the main script here. So this is the bread and butter of the entire thing. This is like the brain and the guts. Um, I'm going to open that up inside of my uh, Visual Studio. Uh, people uh, use Visual Studio Code, I believe it's called, uh, which is like, it has more Lua support, but this is uh, sufficient for me. All right, so we've popped open the script uh, and I will just go over a handful of variables. I've tried to condense it all into uh, just one area at the top of the script to make it very easy and accessible for everybody. Um, so you don't have to go through and like try to work out what's happening through functions and stuff. The variables are just in an easy to edit place. Um, so the first thing we do is ignore this very top part. This is just loading in data uh, used inside of the map. So we can just ignore that. Um, I have tried to comment everything, um, but I will still go over them all now. Uh, so we've got uh, bosses per player. Uh, if it's set to true, uh, bosses spawn, spawn per player. So in this case, I've got four players on this map. That means four bosses will spawn at the top. So the one that spawned at the top here, 
uh, would there would be four of them. So that's like per player. Uh, leaving that false means that just spawns uh, whatever is on the wave table. And again, we'll get to the wave table soon. Uh, spawn radius. This is just for regular units. Uh, I mentioned this earlier when we were placing the markers. Uh, so it's set to five units. Uh, each unit is approximately the size of like one of the tier one turrets. Uh, so like a tier two turret or, you know, a tier one um, power generator would be uh, two units. So five radius, uh, that's a good number. Um, higher the better. So if you've got a big, nice big open area, make it higher. Uh, just make sure you don't put it right on the edge of the map. So if I just come into here, if you're putting, uh, if you're making it a very large spawn area, let's try to stay the, away from the edge of the map. Uh, if something spawns outside of the map, generally speaking, it can never get back in. Uh, not to be confused with areas. Areas have a different uh, effect. So you can spawn things outside of an area. Um, this is more technical, but if it's inside the area, it will be safe. Um, as long as it's inside of like the actual hard coded edge of the map. Uh, so going back here, uh, boss wave spawn radius, the same difference as the spawn radius. It's just for the boss units. Again, you want that a nice big number, especially if you're spawning experimental units. Uh, the wave uh, waypoint radius, uh, this is probably best shown. So uh, from the enemy's perspective, so this is where we come back into the game and this is where things like cheats and stuff can really make a difference. So if I go Alt uh, F2, and then I swap over to the army survival enemy and then just pop out of that and then speed up the game until everything spawns. And then if I hold shift, we can see all the waypoints. So uh, for the ground units, we've got this waypoint marker and you can see the uh, waypoint radius is around that position. Uh, this is to help stop clogging of units. So again, the higher the number, the better, uh, but you do need to make sure that it doesn't put like these waypoints off into the water. Uh, it's or the mark, yeah, making sure the waypoint uh, radius does not go off these edges. So again, uh, it, it adds a lot of versatility. And again, this is just to stop when, uh, so, so sort of like modded units, like this unit, for example, uh, can collide with other mod units. And because they're trying to reach a very similar position, they will start bumping into each other. And then it kind of just has this cascade effect, like much the same as like traffic. Um, so yeah, uh, assassination, uh, this variable is, Sim as simple like if the player's ACU dies, they are defeated. Uh, generally speaking, I reckon you should leave this off unless you're trying to do something very specific with ACUs. I recommend never having assassination on. It means if a player gets randomly blindsided by a strategic bomber or experimental, or they just you're trying to manage a defensive front and the player gets caught out, they're, they're out of the game and that's not a lot of fun. And then other players then have to compensate because they're just their entire base gets destroyed. Uh, wave balance. Uh, this is an important one. Uh, the way that this works is in ratio to each other. So if you have, for example, land, air, and navy, much the same as the markers enabled, uh, like I do in the uh, tests that I did just before, um, it means that it will actually scale the unit spawn wave table to uh, a percentage that's in ratio to how many of those categories are enabled. Um, so for example, if I have uh, land, uh, enabled and only land enabled. Um, it means that 100% of that 100% of that wave table will spawn. If I have land and navy, only 50% of land units from the table and 50% of the navy units on the table will spawn. And then if you have air enabled as well, it's 33%. So like one third of a whole percentage, and it rounds up if you're wondering. Uh, the <laughs> so if you have three units, it will round up to the nearest uh, integer. Uh, so that that's very handy. Uh, again, it depends entirely on your map. Uh, if you want them all enabled at all times, maybe wave balance, you want wave balance off. Uh, but I recommend leaving it on if you want players to be, enable, be able to enable and disable uh, different categories uh, as a player choice. Uh, enemy base victory is set to true in this example. Uh, so basically these giant, uh, uh, artillery pieces that spawned in 
can be destroyed. So these two artillery pieces, if these are both destroyed, and it is important to note that all of these uh, enemy bases that spawn uh, are destroyed, um, then the players can receive victory through destroying these uh, bases. Uh, there's multiple ways to get victory. Um, destroying the bases is one if it's enabled. If you don't want players to be able to do that, you just set that to false. So like, for example, false. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty straightforward. Like it, it, it I hope it's self-explanatory. Um, so uh, this is where the resource spawning comes in uh, for each player. So as you can see here, I've got the uh, different rows of mass spawning, and then I've got the hydrocarbon uh, positions. Uh, the way that these work is that <laughs> I, I originally used to have to hard code it in, and now I've created a system that is a little bit more understandable. Uh, it's represented in ones and zeros. So in this uh, instance is like position zero has no mass on it. Position one has mass and then zero, then one. So that would represent this top row. So this, where this uh, building here, this would be, uh, sorry, zero, one, zero, one, zero. Um, and then if I go back to the next line, it's one, zero, oh, sorry, the next line is actually just zero. So that actually leaves us this gap. And then if we go back down here, it's one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. So in this case, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, and so on and so forth. Um, it's set up like this so you can define spaces. So for example, I might not necessarily uh, need to add these zeros on the side here. Or if I wanted to, for example, create a, um, kind of like a hex style uh, spawn points for my um, mass points. So if I change that and just quickly reload the level, each player will now receive their own, uh, you know, mass placements as I have just defined. Uh, this also means that if you're clever with this, so you can add to it or remove as much as you want. It's not limited to this amount of lines. You can actually double it or halve it. Uh, and as you can see here, I've created like a, a grid like uh, and more mass points. So th there's a lot of versatility there. Uh, and again, just as a very quick example, uh, if in my case, like with this map, I don't like the fact that the bottom players have their mass in the front and then the top players have their mass here. Uh, you know, I, as, a, as a map maker, I'm like, maybe that's not quite what I want. So what we can do here is just perhaps just make, so, make it so all the mass kind of spawns in sideways. Uh, there is a bit of a hard coding of where these are spawned on top and bottom. Uh, in future updates, I am planning to make it so you can swap these and put them on different sides. Uh, but that's, it's a little complicated and it's not exactly an easy thing to do. Um, so they also have got the hydro resources here. Uh, again, same, same difference. They just uh, coded to handle the hydrocarbons uh, size. So we've got the debug mode here. This is really for internal testing only. Uh, it, it does, it just sets the enemy defense position to the enemy team and means it's easier to sort of quickly test. Um, it also spawns one of every single unit on the unit table. Uh, this is more for uh, testing. This is more for testing uh, mods than it is for testing the map, but I've left it here uh, accessible for those who might need something similar. <clears throat> All right, so we've got uh, the messages. So the messages are what pops up at the start of each map. Uh, this is my version message. So this is my way of having like version notes because at changing the map's description, every single map update is a little bit intrusive and it it's like, it's not a good way to handle it. So I've added this versions. Uh, it's a simple, you know, this is the first release of the game, uh, the map. Uh, I added a new uh, set of waves. I've rebalanced it. You know, whatever you might need it can go in here. And I've just got an example format for something that's a bit more readable. Uh, instructions. So if your map has something specific 
to your map uh, you just you can add it here so saying something like uh, you know enemy wa waves come from the sea or watch out for the boss uh, waves because they spawn behind you or something like that like it's just a bit of instructions um, the credits uh, created by your name here so for example mine would just be like Paco um, you can put whatever name you want there uh, this was just the easiest way to just sort of throw your name credits on the front uh, and then the end messages. Uh, so this is probably a little weird, but uh, each thing has been labeled at least to tell you how each of these messages work. So if you just win through surviving, it just says you have won. Uh, if you lose through, you know, whatever, it just says you have lost. Uh, the enemy based destruction victory me message, so you've destroyed all the enemy structures. Uh, they have commas because you have won will actually uh, display after this message uh it, it, it's a little weird but it is it's something you'll probably discover through testing uh keeping these short and simple and just descriptive for players to understand that something has happened um to make sure that they know they've won or make sure they know that they've lost and you know the reasons for their winning and losing is described so again the defense structure was destroyed but the waves were defeated uh that's the endless mode uh, endless mode is uh, a whole thing in itself, but we can define that on the wavetable, um, which we'll do later. Uh, and so, yeah, you can edit that however you like if you don't like what it says. Uh, we've got that game modes. Um, this, again, this is this whole thing in itself. Uh, better not touching this if you're not familiar with coding, but it is an option here. Uh, mod support, again, we're just going to probably leave this. Uh, the only reason I would recommend removing anything from here is if you really don't want it from your map but it shouldn't necessarily be yeah I, I wouldn't recommend touching this if you're not familiar with lua coding and that's the end of the edible variable so everything beyond this point uh, where it says edible end uh is very complicated uh again if if you're familiar with coding this is probably totally fine to edit and change uh, but right now it's probably best if you just leave it as is. Um, I don't mind if people do edit beyond this point and change things however they like. I'm actually happy if people do because that means, you know, coming up with something a little different and interesting. But for the most part, I wouldn't recommend touching it if you're not familiar with coding. All right, so now that we've uh, looked through this main script, uh, the next most important script is the options script. So if I just pop in it into my uh, editor here, and I will just close these other scripts. Uh, there is actually two files we need to open. So I've opened up my survival tutorial options, and then if I pop over to this library folder, and then default options, I'll open that as well. Uh, these are kind of interconnected with each other. So this is my options and this is my default options. All right, so let's just quickly go through the options. So we have the survival mode here. Uh, that's just a simple game mode. I'll show how to remove game modes and such if you don't want them running, uh, if you don't want players using them. Uh, these are the two standard ones. Uh, they are, they're just they're just the standard ones like uh, the, the, there's no harm in leaving those running unless your map is very specific uh, enemy types uh, so we've got like land and navy and air and such uh, this is really cool because it's just an easy way for players to define whether or not they want to have to deal with air units or just land units um, or if they want to do something interesting and do only air and navy like that's always a fun one to try because um, no one expects it. Uh, build time, uh, this is again uh, probably one of the most important things that you get right early on is how long it takes for you to build up your base without any sort of mods or anything uh, to a certain time frame to let players get ready for the first fight. Uh, starting resources, so this was how these uh, structures spawn in. Um, so for example, I've got tier one mass extractors here. If I set it to say pre-built tier two, it will actually start with tier two mass extractors. Um, this is probably one of those few settings that I would recommend leaving it on pre-built tier one. The, it's just trying to bypass that early building phase that is super repetitive and super time consuming. We can just bypass that now. That's like one of the key features of the map is that we can, you know, ignore boring things and just focus on the funner parts. Um, you know, there's always the option to turn it off or even set it to a higher value. Uh, the defense structure, so that is our 
civilian building here or the mainframe i should say um th this can be whatever you want it to be uh it's quite easy to change variables here which i'll show in a minute um but we can set it to whatever we like so in this case i just got the civilian structure or you can have it like as a paragon or something it, it's up to you uh endless mode so the endless mode happens after all the waves have spawned and then there's a wave table where it just continually spawns for infinity until the players have lost um that's a that's a fun one if people uh you know are getting really good at the wave uh, sorry getting really good at playing through the game but they want that sort of like fun not to end and you know we have scaling difficulty once you hit endless mode as well so that's that's cool uh lane spawning um so this is all players or only player lanes so for example if i had three players playing um i might want to set it to uh player lanes instead of all lanes uh in this kind of a map sequence so for example if this blue team uh, if there was no blue team, I don't want enemies coming from the top right because the map's been set up in a way that like each player should be defending their own lane. Um, or if you're setting up like my uh, survival genesis map where everyone's lined up together and all the enemies just come from the top of the map to the bottom of the map, you want to probably set it to all lanes. That way enemies are distributed more evenly across um, all the spawn positions. Um, so if I was just playing single player, say for example this red team and then i said uh all lanes that means enemies will my my wave table will spawn on each of these positions and spread them out evenly uh we've got survival units uh so this is this was a requested feature um i don't use it very often but it is still functional nonetheless uh we can set so we can load all the units from the base game and mods uh so the supported mods are in the mods folder um just very quick little tidbit on that. Uh, so that would be the units folder, and this is all the supported mods, modded units. Uh, we'll get into that soon enough. Um, so we can say all, so like units from base game and mods, or we can go base game only. So for example, if you're running a mod and you don't really want to have to deal with the mod units, but you want to use the mod units, you can just do, um, you know, base game only or you can have mod units only. So if you don't want the base game units attacking, but you want the interesting, cool, weird, generally harder um say for example total mayhem units we can do mod units only uh enemy waves uh so this is a wave table uh selection uh, at the moment it's only just got the base one uh this allows you to set up uh, different wave tables. So for example, if you build your map in one way, you might have it as like an easy wave table, and then you might have a hard wave table, or you might have like a really cool, weird dynamic. Uh, this just is, allows, again, this is one of those features that just allows people to have essentially multiple survival uh, modes on one single map rather than separating them onto different maps. Um, start wave, uh, this is just a simple select your start wave. Uh, this has to be uh, modified depending on the amount of waves that you have uh, but for testing purposes i have last wave it uses a special function that works out what the last wave is or just waves one through five uh generally giving players the ability to just jump to something like say for example wave five is nice uh sometimes you have a lot of mods enabled or a lot of easy early game stuff so maybe players are already getting a little ahead of the uh, technological tree so allowing them to jump a little further in the game uh, is very helpful uh, that just bypasses a lot of the uh, uh, like this is too easy boring phase and just gets into the the meat of it uh wave multiplier this is just doubles the amount of the wave table uh this is in here but i very rarely have used it because i generally balance my maps to be probably a little harder than average uh but there is an option here for players who want just maybe they've got some pretty ridiculous mods enabled and they really want a challenge or a good example is if a player is doing single player on say this map again i'm doing single player and i want all the enemies to spawn from each direction but maybe i set it to times four to get that feeling of four players worth as a single player so there's there's a lot of versatility there for players uh, options 
Uh, wave frequency, this just is how often the waves will, between waves will spawn. Uh, this is used in the wave calculations. Uh, for example, uh, you know, the default is set to 50 seconds. I find that that's a good number between waves. Uh, it's a little less than one wave a minute. So if you have 35 waves, that would be 35 minutes. But if it's about 50 seconds, you're talking about 30 minutes. It speeds up the game a little bit, but it also can help with like making the difficulty a little bit more interesting because you are have less time uh, between waves and the bulk of the waves will spawn uh, in relation to that number. So, uh, for example, if you want to have humongous waves with like huge numbers, maybe you want to crank this number higher. Uh, if you've got very small waves with like maybe, you know, a small platoon of units in each wave, uh, you might want to crank it down to default to like 15 seconds or something like that. Uh, again, I will be showing you how to do that uh, very soon. Uh, boss waves, uh, again, uh, this is just a simple option to allow players to enable or disable the boss uh, waves. Uh, those are defined inside the wave table. It doesn't disable the whole wave. It will still do the same wave as the boss, but the boss units themselves will not spawn if this is disabled. Uh, nukes, again, nukes are one of those things that some players like, some players dislike. I personally dislike them. It kind of takes away from... Uh, what's happening, but this has been set up in a way that's very easy to manage uh, and we can also let the players know what's happening with nukes with messages and stuff that we can put on the wave table. I'm talking about the wave table a lot. I will get to the wave table. <laughs> it's it's the, it's it's you've got to sort of understand the concepts beforehand. Uh, enemy structure objective. Uh, so this is just Enemy structure objective. Sorry, it just took me a second. I'm like, I should probably reword that. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, so th these would be the um, two uh, artillery pieces that spawned in before. Um, it just says simply enable or disable them. Um, and then the victory condition is set inside the other script. Uh, I, I was originally going to have it so the players could set that option, uh, but I very quickly worked out that it was better if the map sets that option because then... You get that you get that control uh so and then spawn rate uh, continuous or once per wave uh this is a big one if you're doing small groups of enemies per wave like say every 15 seconds you spawn 10 units something like that uh once per wave is ideal if you want the gr uh, units to be all clumped together uh but if you're doing humongous waves continuous is probably better because it spawns the units evenly throughout the whole wave uh and that, that, that's an interesting setting. I, I've left that for players to decide, uh, but yeah, as a map creator, you might want to sort of force one of these settings. Uh, remove restrictions. So there is some default restrictions put into the default game mode for this script. Uh, generally speaking, I never want players to turn it off because it kind of just completely destroys the balance of the game. Uh, p players have a tendency to build like um, Aeon uh, oh, God, resource allocation uh, support commanders um, and they just spam them and it just gives them a, just a, a ridiculous amount of resources. It's, it's, it's a whole balancing thing, but I've given the option to players for just them to disable it. Again, if they're playing with crazy mods or whatever they want, it, just giving the player that control is important. Uh, all factions. So this actually functions in the same way as a lot of the all faction mods work. It just, it, it's handled internally and it works with, uh, nomads out of the box so you don't have to actually have any mods you can play this without mods and have this function just fine um it can i think it can work in conjunction with all the old faction mods it's been a while since i've tested that i'm fairly certain it does um but yeah you can just players can define whether they just want to start with like all the engineers or support commanders or acus uh, acus times two is a little dangerous because players who are trying to upgrade multiple acus at the same time uh, can run into a weird issue where they get like into a soft lock and then you got like experimental units and stuff for a bit of fun uh, we've got wreckages uh, do units leave behind wreckages uh, again this is could be a you making the map decision but it just means like the little wreckages that you can reclaim uh, from the enemy waves uh, I usually leave that on uh, sometimes you want to uh, disable that if you've got some like resource mods or something going 
Uh, enemy damage, this is just a simple damage multiplier that players can add if they're finding the difficulty is just too easy, but like not challenging enough. It's just a simple, again, challenging thing. Same with the health. Um, and then we've got scaling here, which is probably the hardest thing to balance in the entire thing, but it is there uh, for players who want it. Uh, it simply just adds damage and health. And I think it has a hard cap, yeah, it has a hard capped um, speed increase on enemy units. So that's only like 10% or something. I, I, I kind of worked out that 10% was that kind of sweet spot. Uh, but it does have scaling damage. So for every wave, it get, gains like an additional like 5% damage. So once you hit wave 30, everything's doing like 300% damage and has 300% like health. It's, it's, a, it's a whole thing. All right, so I got us to open up uh, both default options and the uh, survival tutorial options. Uh, that's the name of my map, obviously. Uh, and we've got these options that will actually appear inside of our lobby options. So for example, here I've got the game mode one, and then in the fault here, I've got this uh, survival game mode equals nil. Uh, we want to set it to standard. Uh, as you can see, it says standard here, which is actually uh, related to the key. Uh, and the reason this default option is here is so if, for example, I don't want players to select a game mode, I would actually select this entire option and then just delete it. And then this default uh, will set it to game mode. So for example, it's missing game mode from the options. That's what this line of script does. It's saying it's not here anymore. Uh, if it's not there, let's create it and just set it to standard. Um, so an alternative thing I could do here is they say, well, I don't want the standard to be um, the game mode that gets loaded. I actually want RNG to get loaded. So I can actually change uh, what that default game mode will be without players being able to select it. Um, and again, that's really important um, that you actually set it to what you want it to be. Um, so a second thing here is if, for example, I do want RNG to be the default game mode, I want to keep standard, but I want the RNG mode to be the default mode. So the first thing we need to do is actually set the default uh, as you can see at the top here of this option is set to one. Uh, that is the array index. Um, if you're familiar with this kind of script stuff, uh, arrays in most languages start at zero. In Lua, it starts at one. Don't ask me why it starts in one. It was very confusing when I started learning Lua, but it starts at one. So this actually first refers to this line. Uh, if you've ever played survival maps and you've got like a, you know, default options error, something like that, spamming inside of the lobby, uh, that means that somebody has set this default to some weird setting. Um, so, okay, so the, going back to setting this game mode to RNG mode, I'll set this default to two because it's in the second position. And then inside my default here, I set that to RNG as well just to make sure that it's like consistent between the two. So that will set uh, us to RNG mode and make sure that the if for whatever reason the game mode doesn't get set, it gets set to RNG. So I can just leave that as default one for now. Um, the enemy types, this is a one an important one. Some people really, really want this. Uh, their maps to have no air units or no land units or no sea units or whatever. Um, so this is a critical step of uh, how do I get rid of that stuff? So for example, if I want to get rid of anything, uh, one of the categories, the first thing you want to do is remove the all uh, and then whatever category might be there. So for example, uh, I don't want um, Navy, for example, here, maybe my map has no Navy. So I'll just get rid of anything that has Navy in it and we're left over with this. These keys do not touch these. These refer back to certain settings inside the script, uh, but we do need to make sure we set the default. Um, so for example, I really want my uh, you know land and air to be a thing. So I'm just gonna set that to one again, because it's in the first index here. Uh, if I set it to two, it would be land. So only land units would spawn by default, and then three would be only air units. So again, I'm just gonna set that to one. Uh, and then again with this we need to go over the default options and just make sure that this enemy type and this is where it might get a little confusing we need to make sure it matches the key so enemy type is equal to four and in this case I've got it set to land and air so I actually need to set this to two uh, it's again the key 
is the key, uh, we need to make that match. Um, and then, if, for example, if I only want land and air to spawn and I don't ever want anything else to spawn, I can do that. I can just make it that. Or if I don't want players to ever have this option, I can just delete the whole thing. And because this key, default key here is set, it doesn't matter. It, it'll work as long as this is set correctly. Um, so we can apply that for pretty much most things. Uh, there's a few uh, exceptions uh, for things like things like uh, for things like this, like the build time. Uh, build time is keys are based on seconds. So for example, here we've got veteran 30 seconds and the key is set to 30. Uh, one minute and 30 seconds for pro is set to 90 seconds, obviously 60 seconds in a minute plus an additional 30, uh, and then 180 for three minutes, etc., etc. So some of these keys are different. And again, if you wanna say, well, I want my players to only ever have 30 seconds, I just delete that, pop over to here, build time, set that to 30 seconds. Again, very, very important that you have this consistent throughout. And then if I want to delete, say, all of these except for two of these, I just need to make sure my default is set. I know I keep iterating over that over and over and over again, but that's one thing that uh, a lot of survival maps have made that mistake in the past. Uh, starting resources, again, you can just delete these and then set the default key here. Uh, defense structure, again, just delete whatever you don't want players to be able to select and you can set the default structure here. So for example, I really want uh, the players to have a Mavo. Uh, we can go over here and just copy over the key, which is the actual unit ID. Uh, you can find that through, uh, so you can find that ID through the uh, client's uh, unit database, or you can go to the Forged Alliance Forever GitHub and go through the database there. Uh, the way I usually do it is I find whatever it is I might want. So for example, I want the defense structure to be, uh, it doesn't even have to be a structure. It can actually be a unit. So for example, I'm gonna pick this uh, anti-nuke and then I'm just going to compare it and I'm gonna have to do that slightly off screen. Uh, but here we got the uh, unit ID that we can just copy from here and then paste it straight into here. And then we can also add that to here. So for example, if I just want that to be whatever it is, and I'll just call it like the, the mother, and then just go like the RT, whatever you want to put, it's, it's up to you. Um, I like to keep this versatile, I like to keep it uh, clean and you can do whatever you like you can make it as weird and wacky as you want or you can make it as stock standard as you like uh endless mode again that's just like a one and a zero we can delete that if we don't want it or want it up to you lane spawn uh this is one of those few that you might want to like hard code to be true or false depending on how the map set out uh units again it's up to you if you want to keep it or not. Uh, enemy waves. Uh, so this is probably a good example of how we're going to set up uh, waves. Uh, so for example, if I just pop over here, back into our, uh, sorry, back into the map folder, pop into our waves, we can actually duplicate waves. We can make a new table and we can call this one like waves um, harder for example, and then we can actually modify that one to have that. I, again, we'll be getting to that momentarily. Uh, waves harder, and then I can copy this, and then I can make a new thing that says harder, and we can just call this waves harder. Uh, try to make sure that your uh, spelling matches. And again, if you're going to change the default from say, you know, just standard, you can set it to harder, set that, and in here we need to make this harder. So yeah, it's it's consistency through these two files. Uh, again, the default options file here uh, is, it's the easiest way I could have set it up. Um, otherwise it gets, it was very complicated before. This is the cleanest way I could get it to work uh, consistently. Uh, so, so again, this is the start wave stuff. Uh, again, depends on how many waves you, your wavetable has, has, but it is based upon, and this is a bit of a uh, legacy thing, but uh, wave one is actually zero, and then wave uh, five is actually key four. So to do this, we have to sort of like manually add them. Um, as you can see that these bl there's blank help, 
uh, the first wave has beginning. So if, for example, uh, wave five has a boss wave, you can write as a help thing, uh, the first boss wave. Um, and that way, when players scroll through selecting what web starting wave they want, they'll have a little description to go with it. Uh, that's that's probably a smart thing to do uh, if you want players to know which wave is what. Uh, wave multiplayer, again, up to you if you want to keep or get rid of it. Just the keys relate to the um, multiplayer. Uh, wave frequency, a, a very critical one. Again, this is based upon seconds. So as you can see, it's correlating between the time set uh, in the text here and the key. And again, making sure you make it consistent in here. Uh, boss waves, again, one and zero. Uh, some of these need to be converted to true and false, but right now they're just one and zeros. Uh, survival nukes, again, up to you if you want these to spawn in or not. Uh, you can easily delete them or keep them going. So for example, if I want this, uh, by default, I think nukes are enabled, yes. So I can actually make them default to disabled and then I can delete this nukes option and there will be no nukes on my map ever. Uh, that I recommend doing that if you choose not to have nukes in your map at all. If you don't have it at all, don't leave it as an option. Uh, if it does get left, that's not a big deal, um, but it just won't make sense to play as they'll assume it's going to happen. Uh, enemy structures, again, you can disable or enable those, whatever you need. Uh, the default setting is to have them disabled, but I've got it actually set as uh, default is set to enable. Uh, I think I originally had planned to leave them disabled but for this tutorial i have left them enabled um spawn rate again this is probably a critical one get to get right uh giving players that option is also good uh depending on the map uh restriction stuff again i would never leave this like i would never like turn off restrictions like you should be doing that by hand. You should be not letting players. I don't know. It, it, it's it's a it's a it's a per map thing. Like like everything here. Uh, all factions again. If you don't like the fact that people can spawn with experimentals, you can just delete the key. Uh, you can delete whatever key you want. Doesn't actually matter. Um, so for example, maybe you don't ever get to tier three or something. You've got tier three disabled. So you, maybe you can just delete that line. Whatever you need. Uh, wreckages again decision uh the damage and health and scaling i would recommend always leaving in it just adds something to your map that players can go okay it's way too easy for me but you can like double the health or down all the damage um and once again just making sure all of that is consistent from this to this and vice versa and again making sure that the default number is never set to a value that's outside of this table um so yeah, that's that's the options. Uh, I hope it's pretty straightforward. I, I know this was probably a lot of me sort of iterating the same information over and over, but it is critical that you have that full control over your map or as little or as much control to the players as you need. Okay, so now this is the big one. We're going to look at wavetables. So wavetables is the uh, your bread and your butter for this entire thing. Uh, we can find the wavetable by just going into waves. Uh, units if you haven't heard already is just for mod support so we generally speaking we'll just ignore that uh, but if we go over the wavetables we can pop in our wave into our script editor and the way that waves are set up is as straightforward as I could get it in, in a way that makes sense to me and adds a little bit of randomness but it gives uh, you the creator a lot of control um, briefly speaking about it um, the way that the wavetables are set up, and before I get into the wavetable, I should probably show off one of the unit tables. So for example, I'll put, bring in the base game unit table. The way that this works is that I um, add the units individually to each sort of category and subcategory. So for example here, I have land tier one uh, scout units, so all the factions tier one scout units. Um, this is just from the base game. This is not Nomads. Nomads, it's its own uh, unit table and so is total mayhem and other mods etc um, but I've you know I've defined these how I've seen fit if you f feel like these are different so you can modify these quite easily uh, but generally speaking this should do everything you need it to do so I've categorized everything into uh, if we just go back to our wave base here we can see here that I'm setting up the wave as like I give you 
the option to give your waiver title. This is not required. Uh, we can say that we want tier ones. We can say how much of tier ones we want. So if I jump back to my units base, uh, these are exactly the same thing. So this is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, or six, sorry. Did I, God, I can't count right today. Uh, that's okay. Um, so we've got scout, assault, support, ranged. And again, I've categorized these in sort of ways that make sense. So like you've got your sort of assault tanks, your light bots, your uh, anti-air, your artillery. Uh, so support can be things like anti-air, shield, units, uh, some modded units that do wacky things like uh, mobile radar systems or like cloak fields and stuff like that. Um, they would be categorized as support. Ranged is things like artillery units, uh, mostly artillery units. Uh, it's good to have them separated out so we don't have like mobile missile launches and stuff like that. Uh, like spawning in mass without the player, sorry, the, you as the map maker knowing specifically what's happening. Uh, so we can sort of define how many of each of those. Uh, but again, the way that this works is that it has this table of units to choose from. Uh, in this example here, I said t uh, land tier one equals this stuff. Uh, we usually just copy and paste these between the wave tables. We don't recreate them. Uh, they do have to be laid out, laid out in this exact format. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't work. I mean, if you're a coder and you like to condense your code, you can condense your code, but this format um, is required or otherwise the uh, internal guts gets a little weird about it uh, because of the way that I've coded it. Um, so again, the way it does here is it has a little pool that it can select from. So inside of this, this is our little scouts pool. We've got one of each faction scout units, just as an example. They're practically the same unit, so that's good. We can say we only want one scout unit to spawn this wave. Um, and it's important to note, and this is critical, this is per player. So if you've got four players and I set this number to one, it means it will spawn four scouts. It seems a little confusing, but because of the way that the balancing works in the script, you can play with one player or 16 players, and then the uh, the way that that's really good is that you can play with less players and more players, and when it comes to testing, you can actually test this by yourself, and it's relatively close to the same difficulty as playing with other players if they're all playing equally as you. You know, so it, 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 it's a it's a scaling thing. It just, it's good to have that, like, versatility. Um, so, yeah, it will spawn one scout for each player, uh, plus the multiplier. So if it's a times two multiplier and I've got four players, that's, like, eight scouts that will spawn, two for each lane. Um, and, and that's pretty straightforward. Uh, so uh, just to clarify, we've got um, scouts, lightbots, tanks, and stuff, etc., etc. Et we've got ranged units. Uh, we've got custom. Uh, custom is like something that just doesn't fit in any other category. Uh, a good example here is experimental. Uh, so Total Mayhem has experimental tier one, tier units, tier three units that aren't just you know tier four experimentals. Uh, so that's what would be represented here by experimental. Custom is just something that is so abstract from the rest. Maybe, I, I can't really think of a great example, uh, but maybe it might be something like a mobile nuclear bomb or something, something ridiculous like that. That's what that category would be. So generally speaking, uh, for balance, you might want to keep that roughly, like in this case, I've got it set to one. Um, I probably keep it in same ratio as experimental. So for example, if I had one wave with one experimental, I would have zero custom. And then the second wave, I would have one custom and zero experimental. Uh, it, it's a, it's going to be, it's very hard to balance mods, especially when there is such a huge amount of mods and, you know, the balancing is really is how I set up the wave unit table stuff. Uh, it, there's never going to be a perfect solution and you can fight it all you like. Uh, but this is the best way to handle this as far as I can tell. Um, anyway, so getting to creating our first wave, we can give it again, give it a title. We can just tell the players what it might be, what, what, what might to be expected. So you can say like land scouts or scout units. Uh, we can then say, Hey, look, we're going to spawn tier one units. 
we're going to spawn some air tier 1 units and we're going to spawn some navy tier 1 units. Um, so for example, if I'm doing a map where I might have uh, land, air, and navy, but I don't want navy to spawn in the first wave, I can actually just remove this. So I can just delete that. Um, if I have, for example, um, I'm this, let's just say I'm up to wave 20 and I want to start introducing tier two navy units. I can do that by just copying this and pasting it under here and saying like tier two, navy tier two. And that's, it, it, it follows the same format. So for example, air has its own format, land has its own format and navy has its own format. It's important to sort of notice those differences. Uh, for example, here, you've got like the bombers and gunships. Uh, with navy, you have submarines and obviously in uh, land, we've got scouts. So again, the format's critical. I know I'm iterating over and over, but very critical you know if you start messing with this stuff you're going to get weird problems and i'm not going to be able to help you fix them uh so what i can do here is say for example the way that this wave is currently working is i'm spawning land tier one air tier one navy tier one and then tier two maybe i really want like some tier two uh, four tier two submarines and this is how you can sort of increase or decrease uh units per wave uh what you need to make sure you don't do is doing something like this where you have two tier two navies. Uh, you need to make sure that these commas are here. So if I do that, that's going to break the entire script. I know it's annoying, but it is a thing. Um, generally the errors will pop up in the debug or the game log and tell you exactly whereabouts it will, it won't say exactly, but generally speaking, it will get it pretty close to where the problem is. Just make sure these commas exist. Same for inside the here. So if I do that, that's gonna break the whole script as well. You need to make sure that these still exist. Um, so that's Navy tier two, and then you can do the same thing for tier three. So it's just Navy tier three. And then if I come up here to like land, I can say, I want all these land one units, but then what I actually do want is suddenly tier four. So this is how you would spawn experimental units. And again, they follow the same category rules. Uh, in the base game, there doesn't necessarily have a category for everything uh, An experimental Generally speaking, T4 experimental means like super mega unit as a rule of thumb. So if there's like a total mayhem unit or something that is stronger than the rest, you want to put that under experiment. Like you just want to make sure that that doesn't get spawned in every single wave. Uh, I know, for example, here I've got it all set to one, but that's just to show off that it's working. So again here we got like tier 1, tier 2, tier 3, and we can do like tier 4, and you can do this uh, as many as categories as there are, so like all the land, tier 1s through tier 4, air, navy. Uh, generally speaking, uh, just as a performance thing, once you hit, like you only ever want like tier 1 and tier 2, or tier 2 and tier 3, you never want like tier 1 and tier 4, like it just doesn't make any sense, unless you're trying to do something very specific. Uh, but if you're trying to do something very specific, that's where we can come down here and um, we've got the nuke stuff and we've got the tier three stuff. But what I want to say for very specific is in this example, we've got wave four and it's custom unit spawning. Uh, so in custom unit spawning, we just define it as like custom is this little table thing here. Uh, this is specific. So we can actually grab this example table and I can actually put it into my first wave if I want to. So I can just put that in here, much the same as tier four, we've got this custom. Um, it has its own little subcategories. Uh, the way that these subcategories work is these are the markers that we made way earlier uh, during this video. So land being the land spawned, air being the air spawn, navy being navy spawn. It does not do, it does not do boss spawn so if you go land boss, that won't work. Um, it just does land air, air and navy. I may change that in the future, but it, it just does not work. So you just stick to your land air, air and navy. Um, this is to define where it spawns. So you can actually spawn land units on a navy spawn. You just gotta make sure that they can actually survive in water, otherwise they'll just explode. And then these units can be defined as anything we want. So for example, um, we got these blueprints. I'm pretty sure from memory these are the 
uh, support UEF commanders. One of them is, and one of them is, I think, a spider monkey. I'm, I'm not, I can't quite remember. It's been a while. Oh, actually, they might be uh, Galactic Colossals. Um, and what this number on the side here does is actually, I mean, it's, it's, it's given away right here, but it's spawn count, blueprint, blueprint, uh, as many blueprints as you want. Um, but it will spawn this number. So these will get spawned this many times. So if I've got like, say, 10 blueprints here, I can spawn them 10 times. And so if I've got like five blueprints, that's 50 units that will be spawned times the amount of players. Um, and that's also said here, it's like is affected by wave balancing. So wave balancing is the category uh, numbers system as well. So if you have land and air enabled, you only get hit half the amount of spawn from here. Uh, that's a, again, that's an intentional thing. That's to, because you, I, you know, every single circumstance has a different setup and that variable can be modified inside the main script, but again, just 10, 10 units of whatever blueprints you want in this spawn position. That's all you really need to take away from this. You can, and I will iterate this, you can do this. So I, for example, maybe I want only like two of this blueprint and then I want, you know, 10 of that blueprint. So I can do that. So you can define how many you want. This is just a way to simplify it. So I can say, I really want 10 support commanders or something like that. Like, but I also want 10 of other things or 10 of these things. So I, it, it's, it's just keeping it as condensed as possible with it still making a lot of sense. Um, so the next thing we can do is the nuclear spawn stuff, the nuclear launches and bases, uh, the way that this works. And again, these can be the, these can, things can be added to different ways. So if I just copy this and pasted it in here, so on the first wave, I can do these things. Uh, but for now, we're just going to have a look at uh, just how this works. So we've got the title, Wave 2, Nuclear Nuke Launches and Bases. Um, the way we set this up is that we have this nuke group, and then in here we're saying spawn equals true. And all that does is just tell, the, it tells the script to just spawn in nuclear launches at all the nuke markers. So if I have a marker from nuke one to say nuke 20, it will spawn 20 missile launchers. So that's where it interconnects with um, the map editor. So for example, here I've got the uh, marker here, which is nuke one, and then over here it's nuke two, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I can have up to like whatever number I want. It's not constrained. It is its own thing. It can be as many or as little. Um, so we can spawn those in, and then we can also do the same thing with the uh, bases. Uh, so for example, if I just jump back to the map editor, I've got the two base markers here, base one and base two. Uh, at the moment, I have defined it as the base markers will spawn this blueprint. So at this point, it is a Cybern artillery, tier three artillery. Uh, we can define how much health each of these structures have. Uh, so this is the absolute health number. So for example, if I was going to spawn this artillery piece and I say, well, actually, I really want to make sure that its health is the right amount. I could go into the database here and then find the artillery and then assign it um, its health the same amount. Uh, I've done it in this way specifically so people can uh, define as much health or as little health as they want. Maybe it has one HP, you know, it's super volatile, uh, but it's very hard to reach or something. Maybe you've disabled like, you know, artillery or something like that. And then we've got regenerate per player. Uh, so the way that that works is how much health is regenerated per player. Uh, so if you've got one player, it will regenerate at 40. If you've got two players, it regenerates at 80. It's... Uh, again, that's just a, it's just a balancing thing. It's, it's always a little tricky to get that just right, but the regenerate should represent something where players can't just walk up and just, you know, have a scout, invisible scout units or something, kill it because it never regenerates health. Or maybe you do want that, but it, it's, it's a thing that basically makes the objective, um, have more, uh, what's the word like survivability so maybe you drop two nukes on it and you don't quite kill it and then it starts regenerating health so players have to strategically think about what they're going to do about it anyway 
Um, so that's how we spawn these things in. Uh, so the base is just spawning in, the nuke's just been spawned in. If we scroll down uh, to the uh, nuke firing example. So again, the nuke is defined in the same way, but except, except, except instead of spawning, we're actually firing. So this says four. Uh, this will fire four volleys of nukes from each launcher over the wave frequency time. So I have four nuke launchers in each corner of the map. That means I have four nuke launchers that will fire four volleys of nukes over the time, over a wave time. So if a wave is 60 seconds, I have four launchers and they will fire four volleys. It, it's approximately 12 seconds between each nuke launching. And that will be all the nuke launches firing at the same time. Uh, so for example, if I say fire one, at the very start of the wave, every single nuke launcher will fire one missile towards the center of the map. And if I've got four of those, that's four missiles. Uh, this is a way so players can balance how difficult they want nuke launchers to be. So you might, oh sorry, so map creators, um, how hard you want it to be to like fire missiles, like how many nuclear missiles the players has to deal with. So maybe you start off with one wave as like one nuke and then the second wave gets two nukes over like, you know, every 60, so for over 60 seconds would be once every 30 seconds there's a nuke gets fired kind of thing. Um, yeah, so it, it, it really gives you that, uh, you know, scaling it up difficulty, or maybe you just want the finale to have like 20 nukes all fire at the same time, and the players have to have 20 nuke, you know, uh, strategic nuke defenses, like with uh, anti-nukes in them ready to go. Again, totally up to however you want to balance that. Um, but with this line, specifically where it says fire, I can actually copy that line, go back to when I create the nuke launcher and I can actually fire a nuke from it immediately. Um, it doesn't matter what order this goes in, um, but so like for example here, so nuke fire, spawn, uh, it will, the, the code works it out by itself, but it just basically says like spawn it in and then fire nukes, you know, fire four nukes over that wave and it will just do it immediately. So you don't have to wait between waves spawning and firing, but I recommend uh, spawning earlier, so it gives players an opportunity to understand. Uh, and just to note, I made nuclear launches invincible by default. Uh, you can go into the code and remove that, but they're invincible because otherwise it just, it's a whole thing. <laughs> like you don't want like the code thinking things are there or not there and you just want to make sure it works. Uh, try not to put firing in before spawning. Uh, if you set spawn to false, uh, they won't do anything. It, it won't remove the nuke launches or anything. It just, yeah, it, it, it's purely there as a trigger. Anyway, so we've done spawning just units for each category. We've got, uh, this is like an example of tier three. So like land tier three, air tier three, navy tier three, custom unit spawning. And we've got boss waves. So boss waves are a little different. Um, they are similar to custom unit spawning. So like here, like what we we're doing before, but they're slightly different. So uh, we can define how many bosses spawn of a certain type. Um, so for example here, like, like in custom, we can define which blueprints. So for example, I could do like this blueprint and another blueprint, and then we can define the count. So this, in this case, it's one. If I went two and I had two blueprints, I would spawn four. Uh, what type it is, so land, uh, what mods it has, uh, HP, D, uh, that's um, heavy point defense. Uh, there is uh, TMD, which is tactical missile defense. Uh, there's also AA, uh, which is anti-air. Uh, certain things don't work on certain boss types, but this example, it shows you how to do it for air and um, land. You can also equally create a new one to do Navy. So this could be just like Navy. Um, and then you would change this unit to be a Navy unit. We can also add additional HP, can be negative or positive. So if you had like negative, like a, a thousand or something like 10,000, uh, you can make the bosses weaker, but their health does scale depending on the amount of players there are. Uh, we can increase their speed. Uh, so if I go one, it means it moves at double speed. Uh, I recommend never really going above like 25% to 50%. So like 0.5. Um, 
This is because uh, the pathing and the unit's turn ability gets all a little bit weird and turrets don't know how to target things that are moving faster than they should. Um, but that's how you do boss. There, so the, the, the examples here should should be a clue in how to do most things. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and if we go far enough down, we get the analyst waves. Uh, so it waves it works the same waves. It's, uh, sorry, it works the same way as the previous waves. Say that ten times fast. Wow. Um, and it just it's basically it's like a miniature wave table but it just loops forever so in this case i've got like wave one i've got all this tier four stuff spawning and then if i created a second one just over underneath it this would be wave two and then i can say maybe change it so there's no scout units or no artillery units to give players a chance between two waves to like breathe for a minute um these waves generally speaking should be very difficult to kill um, and final thing is uh, increasing the wavetable. So as you can see, this is a pretty small wavetable as an example, but what I can do is just copy, say like wave one, go to the bottom here, just put it, find the right spot, paste another one, make sure I rename everything to the right thing. So this would be wave seven. Uh, I update my comments and stuff to make sure it's all uh, uh, consistent and like understandable if I ever have to come back at a glance and go what wave was that annoying wave that caused all the problems and you can find out easily um, find it so you can just like control F and go like wave 7 so yeah it's, it's important to sort of keep the comments there um, and then yeah so you can just keep adding and adding and adding and adding you can do as many waves as you want uh, like you can have like a hundred plus waves you can have 200 waves um, it really, really depends on the type of map you're trying to create. If you're very, making a very specific experience, you can just do nothing but custom waves. Like you can very fine night, you know, define every single thing that spawns in. And then, you know, if you've got a very slow, uh, a very low, sorry, uh, wave spawn frequency, you can have like, you know, lots of waves that are very easy to code or whatever you need. It's versatile. It's robust. You can do what you like. That's the whole point. And just make sure that these these uh, functions stay at the bottom of the script. I I don't really need to say that, but like, if these are not here, the script just does not work. So yeah, that's um, that's pretty much how you set it up. Um, the very last thing we need to have a quick look at. Uh, I know this video has probably been going for well over an hour, or two hours now, but uh is just game modes. So we'll just pop into game modes. We're just gonna have a look at the standard. Uh, the way that this works, whoops, uh, is that we have our player restrictions and we have our bot restrictions. Bot restrictions generally do nothing, uh, but they are there on the off chance that we need them. Uh, this probably could be removed. I probably will remove it next update. Um, but there's a handful of functions that we can change things here. So we've got add restrictions. Uh, as you can see, it uses the same uh, naming convention as uh, like the units on the unit tables. Uh, so we can just go categories dot whatever this is. And this is the um, resource allocation support commanders. I've got them disabled. So if you want them back, you can just delete those lines. Um, and then they get re-enabled. Again, I wouldn't recommend that. That's an option. Uh, we can enable and disable nukes, add restrictions nuke. So players can't build nukes. They can build nuke defenses, but they can't build nukes. Um, walls, always, always recommend disabling or restricting walls. Uh, walls break pathing, just don't have them enabled. Uh, certain... Uh, uh, certain tier three, uh, sorry, uh, experimental units you might want to disable. Like for example, here I've got the Novix Centaur satellite uh, disabled because players can spam those and the enemies can never fight back. Like they just, it's just free damage. Um, enabling things like the UEF drone, so we can actually remove restrictions. So for example, maybe there's like a certain nuke type, like the um, Yolo. Seth, uh, Sephiron nuke launcher and you might want to re-enable that so you can actually remove the restriction just make sure you do it further down from where the restriction begins 
Um, remove def- uh, remove nuke defense not used. So, I mean, it is technically used now. I should probably double check that this is all working properly, but um, probably want to remove that if you got nukes. <laughs> like you, you want to make sure you've got a uh, nuke defenses. <laughs> uh, we've got different mods. Uh, so, for example, uh, different mods might have some like super units. Uh, like for and, and here's an example of nomads. Uh, I wanted to remove the uh, resource allocation uh, system units uh, su- support commanders, and because it's not in the base game, you have to make sure it's in this little if statement. Uh, each of these mods actually relates back to the uh, main script mods uh, numbering. The numbering will coincide. Um, but yeah, so we can enable and disable stuff from certain mods. So like the Supreme unit pack, the tier three artillery is just outright broken and like will crash people's games. So I've like hard coded it to like, just not be able to be created. Um, and again, the bot restriction stuff is there. Uh, and then one of the important ones, if you want to enable stuff later in the game, if we come down to the bottom here under gameplay update, uh, We've got a little variable up here that's basically just checking to make sure we've done something or not. Um, so we just paragon check. Uh, so at wave, when the wave is equal to 20, so this gets, um, this function gets updated all the time. You might want to do something else special in here, like maybe there's a special unit you added or something. Uh, but this is just a little hook, so you don't have to go through the main script. Uh, but basically it says if paragon is uh, not been tick boxed and wave is equal to 20 well, then we say remove the restriction paragon so up here I've actually added the restriction paragons uh, right here um, because I don't want players trying to build a paragon too early in the map but once they hit late game in the map they're able to build the paragon and then we can add a little bit of text that just tells everybody that the paragon is now available to build and then we just set the paragon check back to true so this never gets called ever again so yeah, that's about it. Um, without going through too much detail of the main scripts or anything like that, that is how you create uh, a, a bunch of stuff with my uh, survival script. I hope this video wasn't too long, and if it was, I'm really sorry. Uh, there's no easy way to go through this. It's a very complicated system, but I have tried to simplify it as much as possible. Um, Thank you for watching. Uh, I have my own Twitch channel. It's a pack of B or twitch.tv forward slash pack of B. Uh, I have no social media because the hell with that. Um, I'm on the Forged Alliance co- community discord. I'm also on the creative Forged Alliance discord and I'm also on the ANZ Forged Alliance discord. Uh, I'm probably on an additional one after that as well, but uh, those are my main ones. Um, if you do need help, post in the forum thread if you could. So going back to the Forged Alliance Forever forms, I have this thread. This thread is dedicated to the script. If you send me a message, I probably will give you a hand. But if you've got something very complicated or if you're not getting on to me and I'm not responding, post it in the forums. I will get to the forums when I can. Um, and I will be trying to update this script as time goes on. If there's any feature requests or anything like that, post them in the forums. Um, yeah, that's, that's really about it. Uh, check out my survival Genesis map on the vault. It is this script as I was making it. Um, It's a little outdated now. Hopefully I'll update it at some point in the near future. I will be creating new maps, uh, new survival maps going forward. I've got one in the works, uh, which is like a one where it's very hard focused on just playing ACUs and like buying upgrades and stuff. It's already kind of looking a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to getting that out at some point. Um, but yeah, so, uh, thank you for watching and, um, thank you guys for, I don't know, using my script and letting me post this video and I'll catch you all next time.